For more videos, visit for the sake of education.com or support me at patreon.com forward slash Daxter Bells. All right, guys, let's take a look at this uh, time consuming problem. But if you if you stay focused, it's very easy to do. So the mobile crane is thematically supported by two out triggers at A and two out triggers at B. Remember, there's two in each side, but in the diagram, you only see one because it's the, you're looking at it from the side. So there's two in each side. That's important. Let me make a quick note of that. Two in each side, in the front, two in the front and two in the, in the back. So four total. In order to relieve the suspension of the truck upon which it rests and to provide greater stability. If the crane boom and the truck have a mass of 18 megagrams at G1 and 1.8 megagrams at G2, find the vertical reactions on each of the four out triggers as a function of theta when the boom is supporting a load giving 1.2 megagrams. Okay, so first let's load the, let's draw on the free body diagram the weights we got. This weight at G1, let's call it weight 1. This weight at G2, let's call it weight 2. And this weight that is being lifted by the machine. Now, we have the mass of each one, then we got to calculate the weights. We got W1, W2, and W3. So let's first calculate those. W1 is equal to the 18,000 kilograms because 18 megagrams is 18,000 kilograms times the acceleration of gravity which is 9.81 meters per second square and that will give you W1 at 176.58 kilonewtons that's W1 W2 W2 is uh, 1.8 and if you do 1.8 that will be 1500 kilograms times again 9.81 meters per second square comes out to be 17.658 kilonewtons and W3 is 1200 kilograms times the acceleration of gravity 9.81 meters per second square comes out to be 11.772 kilonewtons. We got the three weights. Now what you got to do is you just got to like slow down and just think about this a little bit. I'll help you through it. So as you know we got two normals. The normal at A and the normal at B. Now a quick little note. I said we have two in each side. So the normal at each point is going to be half of what I just drew right now. So half the normal at A is going to be the reaction at each of these supports at A because there's two supports. And half of the normal at B is going to be the, support, the normal at each of the supports at B. But for now I'm going to just find the normal at A and the normal at B. Make it a little simpler. So the first thing we did is find the weights. Then we draw our free body diagram and this is how it looks like. Now, as you can see, some of the forces in the y is equal to zero. This is statics after all. Let's assume going up is positive. So the normal at A plus the normal at B is equal to the weight W1, W2, and W3. Right? So the normal at A plus the normal at B is equal to the sum of all the weights, which comes out to be about 206 kilonewtons, just about. So we got our first formula. Now you know that some of the moments at A is equal to zero. Let's assume counterclockwise is positive. So from here on A, we're going to calculate the moments created by this, the other four forces, which is W1, the normal at B, W2, and W3, since we got all the distances. So from, from, from A, the first uh, moment that we're going to calculate is the moment created by the normal at B. The normal at B creates a moment times 4, and it's positive because it makes this whole thing go uh, 
counterclockwise. Now, minus. The, all the weights create a, a clockwise moment <clears throat> because they're going down. Now the weight 1. So weight 1 creates a clockwise moment of weight 1 times the distance from A, which is 3 meters, the vertical distance from A, minus W2 creates a moment times 2, W2 times 2 plus 6 times sine of theta. Let me explain that to you. Because from A, from right here, the distance that you're trying to calculate is the distance that goes all the way over here. That distance over here is equal to this 2 plus this 6 times the sine of theta right here because we have a triangle right here and this distance right here is 6 times the sine of theta minus w3 times w3 is from a all the way to here and you got to calculate this distance right here and we st as you can see we still have another triangle which is 6 plus 625 plus this 2 of course so we got 2 plus 12.25 times right out of space here the sine of theta again sine of theta and all of that is equal to 0 so what you gotta start doing is you gotta start cleaning this up and you got to start basically uh, solving for the normal at B. So when you plug in W1, W2, W3, this W2 you distribute it. And then the W3 you do the same thing, you distribute it. And then you add all the, um, the constants with the constants and the sine of thetas with the sine of thetas. Basically your formula should look something like this. The normal at B is equal to... 147.15 plus 62.38 sine of theta. This is an important formula that we're going to use. Now, let's say this was equation 1 and let's say this is equation 2. When you plug equation 2 into equation uh, 1, you can get a formula for the normal at A. That looks pretty similar to it. It's 58.85 minus 62.38 sine of theta. So, all right, and now we got uh, these two formulas. So, let me turn the page. Now with those two formulas, remember what I told you before. There is two at each one. So the, the normal at each of the supports is equal to half of the normal at A. And I found you two formulas for the normal at A and the normal at B. So the supports at A have a force. Let's call it M prime A is equal to the normal at A, the formula that, I just, that we just found, divided by 2. So you got to divide the formula by 2, and that comes out to be 29.4 minus 31.3 sine of theta. And the same thing goes for B. Remember, there's two supports at B, so you got to divide the normal by 2. And the when you divide the formula by 2, it gives you 73.6 plus 31.1 sine of theta. So those are the formula, the formulas for the the forces, the normal forces acting at each of the supports. Now, at tipping, tipping means when this whole truck starts to get in trouble, because basically, if, when you lower the crane to a point where this weight uh, has enough moment to start tipping the whole truck over, and you're getting in trouble, um, you know that the normal at A is equal to zero. When this truck starts to be tip over, the normal A is going to be equal to zero and the driver's in trouble. So, when the normal A or the normal prime A is the same thing, A, um, sorry, is equal to zero, then 29.4 minus 31.3 sine of theta. 
basically you solve for theta and you get that theta is equal to 70.63 degrees. What does that tell us? That tells us that theta can be between 0 and 70.63 degrees for the tables that they want us to uh, build in order to be able to plot all this information. So <clears throat> we know this is a formula for normal at A, this is the formula for normal at B, and this is the range, I mean the domain of theta. This is what theta can be. So let me switch to Excel and show you guys how to I will plot this on Excel. All right, guys, now here's the Excel sheet with the two tables and basically the scatter of data that I built for this problem. I'm going to show you guys how to build this uh, very easily. So the first thing that you do is we're going to build a table for theta. And as we know, theta is the domain of theta is from 0 to 70.63 degrees, so roughly from 0 to 70. So let's say 0. And I'm going to do just five degree increments. So you select this two and you drag this down all the way until 70. Now, the second thing that you need to do, I'm going to write theta again, you need to convert this into radians because this is in degrees and the sine function on the uh, Excel usually takes radians by default. So to transform to radians, you put equal, you select this one and you multiply by pi we you can just put pi or you can put 3.14 3.14 same thing and then you divide by 180 that's how you convert to radians and again you drag this all the way down and then you have all the radian values of the angles from 0 to 70 degrees now here i'm going to put an a the value at each of the arms in an A, and here I'm going to put N B. The value at each of the arms in N B. So, as we know, the values in N A, we found them before, are right here, and they're equal to 29.4 minus 31.3 times sine of theta. So let's do that. Is equal to 21.4 minus the sine. I'm sorry. 31.3 times the sine of theta, and theta is right here. And close parentheses, enter. Did I type that right, or I did something wrong? No, that should be probably minus 31.3 sine of theta. Minus 31.3 sine of theta. Or it's 29.4. All right, 29.4 minus 31.3 times sine of theta, and I put it at B2. So you can tell right there, okay. So then you drag this all the way down and you get all the angles for NA. I mean, all the uh, values for the normal. And we're going to do the same thing with MB. Is equal to, and the value for MB is 73.6 plus 31.1 sine of theta. Equal to 73.6 plus 31.1 times the sine of theta and theta is right here close parentheses enter 73.6 plus 31.1 okay drag it down and you get all the values for mb now to build a, a scatter you select these values you hold control and you select these values you go to insert you right here hit scatter scatter and you got the scatter for na and then you select these values hold control select these values and then you go again insert scatter and you hit scatter and you get all the values for mb and that's how you get your two graphs and your two tables that they ask you for this problem using microsoft excel Otherwise, you can just build them yourself and do them with the calculator, make the tables, start plugging in the values, etc., etc. But you can do that. So I wanted to show you a neat way of doing it with Excel, and this is how I would do it. So final answers for the graphs. And these are the final answers for the formulas and the domain of theta. 
please comment below if you want me to do any problems and I'll be happy to help. Thank you.